Hello, everybody. Ron Callis here with another episode of Automation Unplugged. We are here for episode 59. It is Wednesday, November 14th, uh, just uh, almost, I'll say approximately 1230. Got a big week next week. We have Thanksgiving. Uh, we're actually going to get a show in next week, so stay tuned next week as well. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. But um, we have a great guest. We have uh, Mr. Joe Whitaker. Uh, this man, if you're just paying attention to the, the CI space, the, the CDA universe, then you can't help but see this guy. He's, he's almost everywhere. It seems like maybe at the same time. And uh, so you're always seeing him in, in Facebook Live content or YouTube content or from CE Pro or Resi Systems or Tech Integrator. He's, he's featured all over the place. And uh, he's a, an entrepreneur. Uh, he's an inventor. And uh, he's a CDF board member. And uh, he's lots of other things. But I'll, I'll let him tell you about all those things. Uh, so let me go ahead and bring in Mr. Joe Whitaker. Let me let me work my little software here, and uh, let's see if we can get him in. Hey, I'm here. Hey, uh, he's here. What's up, Joe? How you digging this new software, by the way, Joe? What do you um, think? This software is amazing. Uh, um, I, I mean, all the things you can do. I'm just like so impressed. It's fun. Well, we're going to we're going to have some fun today. Well, Joe, thank you for taking time to join uh my audience and uh and I. And uh, actually, let me address the audience. So, if you're out there, if you're watching live, thank you. Uh please like and comment. Actually, write write us a comment and let us know where you're coming to us from. And uh and and do the same if you're watching on replay. That's that's always fun. Uh, in fact, Joe and I will be monitoring these videos post-show. And if there's any questions there, we're going to make sure to get those questions answered or get you pointed in the right direction. And uh, even if you're watching on replay, post in the comments and, and let us know where you're coming from. And uh, and share. Of course, share this. That's how this content gets out there to a larger audience. Uh, believe it or not, right now we're averaging anywhere from one to 3,000 views on this content, uh, on these shows, uh, not live, we're not quite there yet, but uh, uh, over the next few weeks, uh, we generally get a pretty pretty good push, and that happens because you guys like and comment and you share the content. So thank you for thank you for doing that. And uh, hey, there's Bobby Dodge. See, let's let me show you this. Look at that. Bobby Dodge from ProSource. Bobby, by the way, I know I owe you a phone call, and I promise you and I are going to travel in the Northeast. Uh, and and you texted me and emailed me, and I owe you a call. So thank you for watching the show, and uh, I'm going to get to you very shortly. All right. Joe, I always like to start with you, man. Can you tell my audience who you are and where you come from? And don't say from your mom and dad. <laughs> well, I'm Joe Whitaker from uh, The Thoughtful Home. Uh, right now I'm in St. Louis, Missouri and happen to be on one of our job sites, actually. Um, we also operate in Dallas, Texas and do some remote work all around the country. Uh, I originally come from, you know, the technology community in a little different aspect and totally got into this industry on 100% accident. As I was moving back to my home city of San Antonio, decided I wanted to try something different in technology. And a buddy of mine was like, um, hey, you know, we're doing this home theater, multi-room audio stuff. And they're starting to talk about like network and servers and things of that nature. Would you be interested in helping us out? And I was like, yeah, I'll help you grow your company. So did a year of that and then realized at that time, keep in mind, this is before the housing market crash, of course, that um, there was a lot of potential um, well down the road coming. So I dived in head first, ramped up the first company I ever started, which is still in operation today in San Antonio and ran by my cousin. Um, what was the name of that business? Um, right now, uh, originally it was Revolution IT. Um, right now, I think it's called Evolution IT. Same company, just a little 
like most people do over over years, do a little rebranding. Sure. And then I just kind of, you know, when that company launched right around the time of the housing market crash, started doing a lot of consultation. Um, but I keep getting dragged back into, you know, the role of the the home technology professional. No matter how far I get out there into, you know, manufacturer consultation or design or any of these other things, I just always keep coming back. And, and a lot of people do that. We've seen, you know, Rick Johnson do that. We've seen other people do that. But I think a lot of it has to do with the passion, but also the inspiration um, when you're actually involved in those, seeing those last nuts and bolts occur. And that, you know, when you're a manufacturer, um, you don't necessarily always get to see um, that smile on the face of a client at the end of that at the end of that project or at the end of that experience. Um, so you lose a lot of that, uh, that emotional connection when you're just building boxes. Um, you know, somebody else gets that emotional reward. And I think that's one of the things that keeps, you know, dragging me back in and has kept me on, you know, the CDA board for, I think this is my seventh or eighth year in a row, um, is just that, you know, being able to be in touch with, uh, home technology professionals and end users and consumers. And now we're a word that I don't like anymore. I don't really like convergence anymore. Um, I'm really enjoying this confluence with the design and architecture community, which we kind of, we spearheaded and kicked off at last CD. So, you know, I think it's those relationships and that joy and that passion that keep me around. So I've, I've got up here on the screen uh, the article that just, uh, what was this published a week ago, uh, that you are uh, uh, recently voted back into the board. So what did you just finish a two-year stint on the board and now this is another two years or how does that work? Yeah, so yeah, every two years, um, some seats will become vacant. Um, and they'll run an election for those incumbents that want to kind of continue. Um, and then any newcomers that have been nominated on. Um, it's every two years. And since CEDIA has become a global organization, that allowed CEDIA to stagger um, the nominations in the election process a little better so that not so many seats vacate at one time. Uh, when I came on the board the first time was a huge turnover. I mean, in one shot, you got me, Haggai, Terrence Murray, uh, Michael Pope, um, and, you know, a handful of others all at one time. So when the global alignment uh, occurred, there was a thought to stagger it a little better. So you would only have, you know, 40% or less of seats revolving at one time. Okay. Under so this, this is going to be a really interesting one this year um, because you, as, as you see in the photo right there, you've got, you know, Peter from the UK comes on the board, somebody who's been involved in the industry for 30 some odd years, amazing volunteer instructor, content developer, and just all around good guy, of course, um, all the way down to uh, Mike Cogbill, you know, uh, a somewhat legend in our industry and, Someone who is, I mean, you know, how often do you get to say, hey, you know, there's a guy on the board that has done stuff with NASA. So, I mean, you know, that, you know, those steps of all the different personalities, people, um, this year looks to be a really, really amazing board. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, ETC, My Michael comes from ETC down here in Palm Beach. Uh, That's down right. In Florida. You always know Michael. You'll see him with his cowboy hat. I was hoping that cowboy was hat, boots, and usually a white button-up shirt. Exactly. That is awesome. Now, how did you uh, end up transitioning, Joe, from being an integrator? I would say how and why. How did this evolve? Just for our audience, in case they're curious. And 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 you are also a significant content creator in terms of. I mean, you're writing. For many of the industry's publications, you're frequently on stage, you know, and so that's you're you're giving back. I mean, at least that's my perception. You're you're really sharing your thoughts, ideas, and opinions with the industry. And and some folks 
just kind of keep to themselves and do their thing. And, and they don't really go out there and try to help others. But that seems to be part of your DNA that you really have gone out of your way in many cases to give back. You know, where does that come from? Well, you know, it's some people like to pay it forward, but as you go, you still got to pay it backwards too. You know, as, as things come about and you continue to grow, um, one of the big reasons why, why I do it and kind of what got me into that is years and years ago, you know, certain people, I started working with certain people doing certain things. C-Pro was one of the first um, with Julie Jacobson, who kind of took me under her wings, so to speak. Uh, people like, you know, Jeremy Burkhart, uh, Sony, just uh, some people at Sony who are, well, they're still there, but they're in different positions. John Lynn, Jason Savage, who is still there. You know, with, with all of these people being involved in me growing and showing success and all that, I feel I have to do the same thing. I have to turn around and revolve that and give that same thing back because maybe I'll be able to help somebody. Or um, I'll be able to give somebody that spark or that little piece of information they do need to make a business decision, make a marketing decision, make even a product decision. Um, and then, you know, touch each one of those things as I go, as I can. Uh, because, I mean, before I was on the board, I was doing a lot with CE Pro. And, and that kind of public exposure is what dragged me into the first two times I was ever nominated for the board, which I didn't win. Uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't make elections in those times. But for one, I was probably a little too young and unseasoned. I was still in my 20s. But, you know, just that that progression of things are happening in our industry. And some people step up and, you know, take the torch and run with it, you know, create mass, bring people in. Um, and the same goes for products. You know, I've done that where I've seen gaps or missing holes or or just something and, nobody's filling it so pick up the phone and you know call burkhardt or, or call mark over at vanco and say hey look there's this one thing that could be fixed we can create this product right now it'll it'll create it'll fix that gap and now there'll be more products that work together and so on and so on so it's just one of those why i always come back to being an htp i walk around these project projects i see products i talk to other integrators and team up with them on products and i give gordon a shout out here Jeff. Hey, hey, what's up, Gordon? Oh, it's Gordon. Hey, Gordon. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Gordon. Sorry to interrupt, Joe. Another great guy, by the way. Who? Uh, back in Speaking of great guys, look who we got here, Mr. Chris. And there's Gamble. There's Gamble coming to us from the UK. Exactly what, what Gamble just said. We've got 24 hours every day, and we have to make those hours count. But the thing is, if you only make those hours count for yourself, you're going to enjoy success alone. And, and that's a big deal. It's better to have a bunch of people around you successful and all enjoy it together. Amen. So, Joe, you're on the board. You've been on the board for a long time. There is a chance, maybe a slight chance, but a chance that we have some people watching that are in the CI community and they are not members of Cedia. What do oh. you say to them? Why, what do you say to them to convince them to become part of the family or, or, does, or does it matter? So the first thing I'll say is also that pay it back thing. You're in the industry, you're not a Cedia member. Well, guess what? You're enjoying the fruits of the labor of Cedia already right now. And one of the biggest spots to see that is in legislation. I mean, you've got the 10 volt thing going on in New Jersey right now. Darren is fighting that tooth and nail to get that exemption. And it doesn't only benefit CDA members. That exemption and all that policy is going through right now. And they are working on that to stop that because there's a new POE law coming out. It's, that's going to say if CDA doesn't fight it, it's going to say if you run anything over POE, you have a POE switch, a camera, a Wi-Fi access point, guess what? A licensed electrician has to install that. So you're already enjoying the fruits of their labor, paying zero dues, paying zero respect, and, and not being a part of CDA. But then there's all the other benefits, um, the community, the future education that's coming out, um, 
I mean, the stuff that has been going on in the last five years is huge. And now we're actually starting to see those outputs of new education, of workforce development, of global outreach. I mean, come on, join it while it's hot. Join it while it's join hot. It while it's hot. Now, what is the latest? I know that Cedia just acquired uh, the the tech summits. Uh, Mark Chikowski, uh and and team over there. They've been going around the country for years doing these rep and uh, local. I think it's local rep sponsored events. And now, and they have been started to weave in Cedia education. And uh, I know years ago, there used to be this thing called the CDA Roadshow uh, or regional shows. And now CDA has just acquired this new uh, thing, this regional based show. Can you provide an update? What does that mean for how that, that event or the, all of those events, because they're all over the country throughout the year, how those are going to change or evolve based on that acquisition? Well well, I think Cedia has learned over the, we're coming up 30 year anniversary uh, this coming year. I think they, they learned that field of dreams doesn't work in uh, trade associations. You can't just build it and they'll come. They built Expo, some can. But the education is one of the most, you know, the biggest key components. So take the education to the masses, you know, because you, you've got people in, you know, the outskirts of Chicago, um, rural Texas, um, believe it or not, there's integrators in Idaho Falls, Idaho. I didn't even know there was buildings out there. But, you know, it, it's that point of taking this education on a regional basis. And when you go regional, who are the, who's the, where, where excuse me, where's the trust? Where's the earned trust within a regional location? What's well, with distributors, reps, et cetera? It's not necessarily with the manufacturers at that point, although the manufacturers will sponsor and will show up. The trust is the guys that are that are at the local shop and they go to these distributors and they talk to these reps. They have a you know a one-on-one -on -one basis with them. They know each other's kids' names and what areas each other lives in. That's what Chikowski built. He built this really amazing thought of it's not just about the training or the community or any of that. It's about all of the things that you get when you go local. And that is you, you're in a, in a familiar place and familiar surroundings talking about amazing things with familiar people and familiar brands. You know, you put those together, sprinkle in some amazing CD education. Now you have a big win. And that's the thought is, is use, using kind of that platform to really do a regional CD thing, kind of like the old road show, which we all loved. Um, but, you know, bringing that back with more. And making it better. And, yes, and mm -hmm. making it better. Because that platform is just, it's so well done the way it's put together. So when you and I were talking just before going live, you kind of blew my mind, rocked my world. And I, I've got a lot more questions on a particular subject. And I'm, I'm going to preface this and prepare the audience. I might sound really uninformed here. Maybe I always sound uninformed, but I'm going to sound particularly uninformed right now. Um, so you've got something that's pretty exciting. And you you said, Ron, there's you know how you're doing marketing and SEO and, and websites and whatnot for your customers. He's like, well, I took that and, and I've taken it a different direction and we're doing voice SEO. And I was like, what in the world is that? So there you go, teed up. What 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 is this? And I know I'm all pixelated, but hopefully everyone can hear me. I don't know what's going on there. But, um, so uh, tell so me. the company the company is called Voice Dawson, and it was uh, a concept that kind of has been around for a bit uh, for me um, in, in a different form factor uh, with my business partner Steve Siegel down in Dallas, who runs Dallas and's co-owner of Thoughtful Home. Well, that concept grew through one of my closest friends, uh, uh, Deander Phillips, who I hope she's, she might be watching. Um, and they created this platform where an integrator can have their own skill, a skill on Alexa. Um, so far, I can say, you know, we've got JJ Cannon. Uh, Digital Delight has a skill. 
Um, Amanda Wildman with True Media's hers should be like launching in a week or so. If you'll send me the rest of the questions, Amanda, I need more FAQs. Um, and then uh, you know you've got uh, Rob Sutherland, who is the current treasurer of Cedia. He has like the first international skill. If you get it on the U.S. dot, it talks to you in the English I'm talking to you in. If you get it in the U.K., it talks in U.K. accent. So what we've done is built a platform for, for integrators to have representation in voice um, because very shortly, Amazon is going to launch what's called voice SEO. The ability to search through um, saying, Alexa, find me this or Alexa, find me that um, and actually be able to find people in your local region, in your service area who are integrators, home theater installers, um, and that list goes on and on. So if you are listening or you listen later, check out some of the some of the skills that are out there. You can go right to your um, uh, uh, Amazon Alexa skill on your phone and up in the search bar, just type the word. Here's how SEO works, by the way. Just type in the word Cedia. You'll see Cedia skill, Cedia's flash update, JJ's skill, and a host of Inspired Dwellings, a host of others where we're already starting to implement keyword terms, search algorithms, other things, so that when you type in one of these terms, you can actually start getting back this information right inside Alexa's app. Amazon's plan is to have that also discoverable during direct voice questions here in the very near future. But before we go further, a shocker for Ron. So what me and Steve had come up with was a virtual tour. You're a builder and you have a showroom, or you're a lighting designer and you have a showroom, you have a model home, and you have Origin Acoustics Valet and some dots in there, and you walk in and you say, Alexa, tell me about this kitchen. Starts telling you about the countertops, starts telling you about the faucet, starts telling you about the ceiling treatment, starts telling you about all the cool stuff. Maybe some lights will light up on the countertop when it's talking about the countertop. Maybe it'll do some other things. And then it'll prompt you to go to the master bedroom next. So this service is about builders. It's about uh, lighting designers. It's about all those show spaces. But Voice Dawson doesn't show it, doesn't sell it, excuse me, to the home builder. When you sign on with Voice Dawson and you get your company's skill, you are now the sales arm to the builder where you make 50 points of margin. You sell them the skill. All of that is implemented. And you now are able to sell something as well. So this is an RMR play for the integrator when they partner with Voice Dawson. For for the builder, yes. Um, you know, our original concept was in residential systems two years ago in a model home. It was a little kludgy, a little difficult because it took a ton of programming on site. Um, so, you know, Steve came in with his ideas. I came in with my ideas. Our, our amazing tech, um, I, call, I call them the nerds. And Voice Dawson all came together and said, you know, if we're going to do this, we're going to build a platform from bottom to top. You know, I mean, from, from I mean, we're going to cover the whole thing. The builders, the lighting designers, and we're going to do stuff for the integrators, and we're going to do stuff for the trade association itself. We're going to cover every single space and then ever, every confluence, every diverging market as well. So don't be surprised if by February you see an NKBA skill and stuff like this for interior designers. Uh, one for KBiz. Don't, you know, don't think that that's where we're stopping because the one thing that skills developers have not done is hit the people that need service. Service providers. They're hitting the, you know, century links and the and the gray bars and the you know, the, the people that really need representation besides Pizza Hut, because you can't order a pizza right off the dock, is people who provide services. We so need what to have big businesses, Joe, from going directly to Amazon. Help me understand the architecture. Do do they if I'm an interior designer and I want to have what you're what's called a skill that's identifiable and searchable through voice off of someone's dot, what today needs to happen for them to be on that? In, to be found in that search? Do they need to go to a voice docent or how exactly does voice docent or docent so, fix it into that versus going directly to Amazon? So, so uh, right now we have a, 
Well, you can't go directly to Amazon is the problem. Amazon yeah. doesn't develop they a they have to go Yes, or, or a company like ours. There, there are some others out there, but there's none that are really concentrating on our, our industry and what we're doing. There, there, there's really none that are doing that. Um, you have some marketing ones out there. You have some other ones out there, but nobody's concentrating on what we're concentrating on. Um, and that's our, our members, the association, and all of those who kind of touch and come around it. So, you know, what we do is we, we have a kind of generic form out there right now, which we can take and get the initial certification process done. Uh, I like that, that kind of color I do up on the screen. What's that? Can you see that? I, I just, the little crawler oh, on the screen. That's fancy right there. Uh, um, isn't that cool? So the certification process is initially the hardest part. And we've started to get more approval with Amazon to do new things like Cedia's uh, flash update, the news update was just launched two weeks ago. There's a lot of loopholes and stuff you have to jump through with Amazon to add these new features. And right now we're adding things like um, um, RSS feed conversion to voice conversion. Um, we're going to be adding features to have podcasts right inside Alexa. We can bring up podcasts. Like say one Firefly had a voice skill and you had all your podcasts listed and whether you're using a show and can see it or using a dot can hear it, you can call up the most recent podcast and listen to it. And then we're going into what we're calling live edit, where a marketing department or JJ over there at a digital delights marketing uh, department can live edit the answers to the questions. No longer having to get the developer to say, um, we now have a different special or we changed a brand. We're no longer supporting Niles. Now we're supporting Polks. So we need that change. No, now they can go right on there and edit that, which has been a heavy and hard approval from Amazon to kind of go down that route. But that's kind of where the technology is leading anyways. So why not be one of the innovators in the space, but offer it to people like me or friends of mine like JJ and Chris and Amanda and Strotech down in Dallas and, and actually grow innovation with innovators. What, what percentage of your projects, Joe, get voice? And your your primary control system is Control 4, is that correct? Uh, correct. We also do Crest Run as well. Um, in residential, I would honestly say we are probably about 85 to 90% voice. Wow. And how have you seen the consumer experience evolve over the last several years from maybe when it, you were first introducing it to what, what the consumers or what your customers are expecting now? Has it changed well, at all? You know, well, I, I think it has a lot because I started watching voice back in 08 with a company called uh, Avoca or Boca. I don't, they're not around anymore. They did the first voice touchscreen for Control 4. They're out of Canada. Um, and then Ted, uh, Ted from VoicePod, you know, I was in early in with that. So I've been watching this for a long time, but I don't think the reason why those companies failed is we didn't have mass adoption at the consumer level, which Google um, with the Google Assistant and Amazon with Alexa has brought us to the point to. Um, and now Josh on the luxury side, um, those, those companies have really gained us consumer acceptance. So consumer, which is, doesn't happen a lot in our industry where consumer acceptance happens first before industry acceptance, because then it was one of those things we were all scared of. You know, when it first kind of, you had customers asking about voice, and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. No, I had bad experiences with this in the past. I, I'm going to admit a dirty secret, Joe. I, I don't have voice in my house. Oh, you know, I know. Uh, I know. You think, you, you, I don't know if you could think less of me, but I, I just made it more easy to do that. <laughs> well, you, you, you need to make the dive. You need to make the jump because whether there's going to be some things that are going to be very important for that in the next in the next few years, the integrator fear goes all the way back to a decade or so ago when we first were told we needed to start installing switches and Wi-Fi access points and the fear of the unknown. Well, voice is a big fear of the unknown for the integrator. You know, it's it is. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make that leap in 2019. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, uh, you know, I, I've I've been a believer in it as a trend, right? I'm an observer of what's going on around me and what's going on in the marketplace. And I mean, I 
I, I want to say, I don't know the year that Amazon Alexa came out, but I'd say the current house I'm in, I moved here in 2013. And I remember my neighbor is a pilot and he is, you know, into gadgets and he had this thing called Amazon Alexa and he started talking to it. And it was it around in 13 or 14 or when, when did Alexa come out? I think somewhere around there was the initial launch. May have been 14, um, but it was around there because we saw like, we're in so 15 or 16 was Amazon's first presence on the Cedia trade show floor. So I think it was the year before that. Got it. Got it. And how do you see in terms of your well, what you're seeing around the marketplace? Um Actually, Sean just uh, Sean Sturmer just posted a comment. He said, "I had the trend opinion as well. Living with it has changed my opinion." Oh, interesting. So okay, what's belief. your opinion, good or bad? Is it, does it drive you nuts or do you love it? <laughs> yeah, Sean, give us a little more there. Tell us, do you do you is it a positive experience now that you've lived with it, or is it a, a negative experience? I'm curious what he's going to say. I, I might pull back from being willing to put it in my house next year. I don't know. There you go. But, well, you you know, know, I, think, well, I was going to say, most people I've talked to have had positive experiences. I mean, I, I can't think of anyone other than maybe just fear of the unknown. I, I There's nothing negative that comes top of mind that I've heard from anyone. Um, that's one of the biggest ones. And, and people do have security concerns, but there's ways to deal with that. Um, it's not as bad as you would think it is. What, so what I wanted to, before I got distracted, before I, I saw the comment and I wanted to post it, what, what's your opinion? Okay. So he answered, he says, it's very positive and has helped my sales. There you go. Well, yeah. I think Joe's going to send you 20 bucks. Uh, <laughs> yes, <indeed. laughs> what, what is, what is how, how does Alexa fit into the dynamic versus say a Josh? And when do you put in one versus the other, or how do you see that evolving? So, you know, I, I've had this conversation with Alex um, at, at Josh for, for many years already. Um, Josh has a very specific focus and a very specific line that they, that they go down. They are specific marketing to luxury. So obviously you don't have the trickle down like where an Alexa can be in any house. You, you, it doesn't matter. Um, and they're also very specific on usage. This is for high end control. This is for natural speech recognition. This is for machine learning and AI. It is not for content delivery. It is not for a lot of that Alexa does, which is one of its and its drawbacks. Um, because I've already heard of hybrids where, you know, you might have a Josh and a, a dot so that you can get both, both portions of the equation. Um, in the same token, I, I do think that's what's going to make them successful is not straying too far from their core competencies and their vision. You know, their strategic vision is very clear cut. It is for control, natural speech learning, those kind of things in the luxury market. That is what's going to keep them successful is not diverging into the things that the consumer market does with very cheap products, not cheap, inexpensive, but very huge development budgets. Right. Now that, that makes sense. Um, Joe, I just got a couple more questions. Actually, I, 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 you and I could, I think I have a feeling we could talk for hours and uh, not run out of topics. But I know you have things to do and uh, our audience has things to do. So I, I won't do that. Um, I, I did want to just bring on the screen here your website for your integration business. Can you tell the audience just a little bit about that integration business? What type of projects do you do? Where do you do those projects? And uh, fill, um, so fill we do, Yeah, we're, we're all over the place um, in a very strategic way, though, which is interesting. So, I mean, we do stuff in coast to coast if they come up. Our primary focus is St. Louis, Missouri and surrounding areas, um, Dallas and surrounding areas. We've done stuff in Austin. We've done stuff all over the place. Um, but we also have a, a hospitality division where we do you know, bars and restaurants. We do stuff 
here in St. Louis, uh, Saltgrass in Dallas, uh, Shula Burgers down in Florida. They're, they're our clients as well. Um, all sure. the way to in between in Louisiana, uh, not, uh, not Louisiana, Louisville. We do things in Louisville. So, but, but our focus isn't product focused. Our, our focus is very solution focused. Um, it's why uh, kind of up in the corner, this is a brand new install, but you see a 1080p Sony projector. The reason why is we got to know our clients before we tried to sell boxes. They're not big video people, but they wanted a little theater. They could just sit down and watch something on a, on a big screen. Um, they're more audio people. So yeah, they might've only wanted to do three grand in a projector, but upstairs shortly above me are speakers that are 10 grand a piece. So it's, you know, getting to know those clients so that the solution is based to them. Same thing in restaurants and hospitality catered to their expectations and the solution they need, not just the little black boxes that you may want to push down their throat because of margin or uh, VIR from a manufacturer, whatever the case may be. Um, we're very solutions focused. And that's why, you know, our projects could go anywhere from, the $15,000 standalone theater, and it's just a theater and no automation to, you know, the 250K um, automation project. It, it's all about scaling those solutions and making them move quick enough where you still see that they are profitable. They do move. They do have all those things behind them that make that when you break it down into hourly, you're still seeing the same hourly amount of money with a 15K one as you do a 250K one. Um, Taking it down to that last dime. Question, what has you excited for 2019 and what has you concerned for 2019? Um, excitement and concern are, are very close to the same though. Um, you know, <laughs> okay. well, it's funny. So so for me, and it's, it's something a lot of us struggle with, is I need more people um, that work for me. I, I need more hands. I, I need more of those. That's a concern for me as a business owner going into into nineteen. The show is a platform. Where, where do they go, Joe, if they want to work for you? What What do you want them to do? I I'll tell you what. I need everything from base level um, to uh, programmers and high level installers. Uh, you name it, I've got a spot except for marketing. We're, we're pretty good there. Um, and back office, I, you know, more people in the, that are in the office, the less money we make. So, I mean, because those guys are smart. We just need more people to deploy those solutions. Um, but in the same token, the thing that excites me is what CD is doing with workforce. You know, CD had brought on a workforce a director and now, a, a, you know, a coordinator and has put together a whole working group to globally build the workforce. Yes. So it's like, I'm involved with that. So, so I get to see a solution to one of my biggest pain points today coming down the pipeline where CD is you know, getting um, educational approval in the state of Indiana and is gonna grow that into Texas and the East Coast and the West Coast and building a whole entry level training program um, that will be like a 12, work, uh, 12 week course then you can put, you know, somebody with zero knowledge about who we are and what we do and bring them in, give them a clear pathway to success and build the building blocks, not only for the individual, but for a company to really fill those ranks without wasting their hard dollars on training, upskilling, teaching somebody how to use a screwdriver, whatever the case may be, um, making that launch pad for that. In closing, there are people watching, Joe, that are, are just getting started or they're earlier in their careers. Can you offer a, a piece of advice or two or three for that newer business owner that's hungry for knowledge, hungry for guidance, and for the, the feedback from those that have already walked these paths? Can you, can you give them anything here in closing? Well, as a, as a business owner, you know, I always look at pathway to success in three tiers. You know, there's there's your strategic, there's your operational, and then there's your outreach. Um, strategic, find your core competency, 
but find the one that you actually enjoy. Because not only are you going to have to do it as you're growing your business, but you're going to have to bring people on to do that job. For them to do that job well, they need to hear you be able to talk about it to them with excitement, with passion. Don't pick things that you don't like. If you don't like HVAC, don't touch a thermostat ever. Let the HVAC guys do it. You know, find the portions in our industry that you enjoy. Stick with them. Stay focused. Don't get blindsided by fancy looking things like star ceilings and theaters. You might sell one, but you're not going to grow a company that way. Stay focused on your core competencies. And the operation side, don't take on more than you can in your early years. Do not do that. It will make you fold faster than you know. Overextend how many hours you think you have to do for a job. Put more in there. You're growing. You're going to run into things you've never seen before. You haven't experienced in construction. Make sure to pad yourself so that you're ready for success. And the last portion is, for a lot of us, it's entirely new. For some of us, the old hat, but the outreach portion, the marketing portion, um, follow me wherever you can follow me within CD. I talk about those things all the time. F follow Ron um, and what he does with Automation Unplugged and the things that happen at fi One Firefly. Follow JJ Cannon and, and Ramble because um, those people are very, very visual, very outspoken to not only our industry, but also to consumers. Um, but make sure you don't blow a bunch of money on useless things. Look at where your audience is, your consumers, same thing, we have the same talk in CDA and marketing. Look at where the people that you are talking to get their information. If you're dealing with millennials, don't write a freaking blog. Don't write a press release. Don't write a some a tribe of whatever. Hit them where they pay attention. If your core people, if they only use Twitter, don't invest any money in LinkedIn. However, if you're dealing with a lot of C-class people, uh, CEOs, executives, Steer away from Twitter a little bit. Do a lot of your stuff on LinkedIn. Look at the pow most powerful point of those who consume your products and where they consume their information. That's one of the most important things I can ever say is don't waste your money or time on that. Find out where they're getting all of their content. And wow. have fun. That's the last thing I have to say. Have fun with what you're doing. Amen. I, I live that and practice that. Have fun focus on your core strengths and circle and surround yourself with others that make you better. And when you do that, um, you know, things get easier. Joe, it was an honor and a pleasure, sir, to have you on uh, my little show here. Well, it's, it's, you know, besides the show, it's always fun chatting with you, hanging out with you. Um, I wish we had thought of snagging that picture of uh, all of us at Cedia with me, you and Jay and Bjorn and, and, you know, I was thinking about that earlier. I was like, man, you know, over the years, you know, we've had a lot of good times with a lot of good people. And, and that's why, like, you know, this show is so cool is the people you get involved with. And and they're people that a lot of us have known for a long time. So, yes, I, I thank you for having me on. We've been talking about doing this for months. Um, so I'm glad we finally made it happen. It's I, I think we've been trying to get this lo the logistics dialed in for about six months or so and uh you're a busy oh man God, been that long. yes yeah, it's been a long time but we made it happen so hey virtual high five we made it happen yes that's right uh so all of you guys if you're not a cd member join cd now get on board get the education there's new education rolling out on a weekly basis I, I, I hate to say any, I, and be wrong, but I think it might be 72 something new courses in the next 12 months. Um, wow. That's how much education is growing um, with content experts and all that stuff out there. But, you know, hop in now before you get overwhelmed, learn up, skill up, because that's going to make you more money at the end of the day. Amen. Well, on that note, I'm going to throw up again your email address. I'm going to assume, Joe, that if people want to reach out, putting your email address out there to the public is appropriate. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, that. And for those of you that are listening because you're driving and you're not watching your phone and you're being responsible, it is joe at thethoughtfulhome.com. That's how you can get a, a hold of Mr. Joe. 
All right, let me hide that. Well, Joe, it was an honor to have you on the show, sir. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. And uh, thank your customer on our behalf for letting you carve out a little bit of time for us. And uh, it was it was great having you on. Hey, thank you for having me. All right, folks, there you have it. Episode number 59 of Automation Unplugged. Had the one and only Joe Whitaker on and uh, stay tuned next week for episode 60. Have a special guest for you. Uh, I am going to throw this up here on the screen. Uh, let me do this and let me do this. There we go. Don't forget uh, One Firefly is now on Instagram. So please uh, go over to the gram and follow us. We'll be posting all sorts of fun content. Uh, so definitely keep an eye out for that. And on that note, thank you very much. This is where you can find more about One Firefly, and I will see you next time.